guys, so we are in my bathtub today. I asked you guys on my Instagram story to ask me hamster related questions, so today I am going to be answering those and I have with me Honey. Um, I thought this was the best place to do it because then you can watch um, the hamsters play. I'm going to be taking out each one so you guys do get to see all of them in this video. So let's get started. So I just have my laptop with me. This has all of the questions I saved on it. So the first one is what is the best type of bedding for your hamster? Um, I would definitely have to say basically anything safe is good for your hamster. So if it is paper based or aspen shavings, those are great. Um, as long as, as it's not pine, cedar, or scented bedding, anything like that. My favorite choice of bedding definitely would have to be a paper-based bedding. I like Carefresh or KT Clean & Cozy. Both are awesome and work well. Aspen is another one of my favorites for something that's a little bit more natural. So the next question is around how much bedding do you recommend putting in your hamster's cage? Um, generally, I recommend at least having one section that is going to have six inches. Um, that just gives your hamster enough room to burrow because hamsters are burrowing animals. It is a very important skill that they like to do. Um, so giving them enough bedding ensures that they can burrow. So the next question is, at what age would a hamster reach adulthood? So for hamsters, it is six months of age, which might seem, seem a little young for us, but it actually really isn't considering hamsters only really live one and a half to two years, sometimes three years. Um, six months really isn't that young for a hamster in a hamster's life. <laughs> The next question is, how often should I feed my hamster? So personally, I recommend not feeding your hamster every single day. When you feed your hamster every single day, this gives them the opportunity to become a picky eater. So then they'll pick out certain things like maybe just sunflower seeds because they know they're going to get fed again the next day. So then they can pick out the sunflower seeds once again. If you give your hamster enough time to eat all of the food in the dish, that prevents them from being come from becoming picky. So I like to give my hamsters two tablespoons every two to three days, and usually they um, eat all of the food. The next question is, what is the best wheel for a Syrian hamster? Um, there isn't too many options out there. Most of them are online only. My two favorite wheels though would have to be the Silent Runner and the Wodent wheel. These just work best for Syrians because they do come in a large size. There also is the Silent Spinner. I think they have a 10 inch wheel now and the 12 inch also works just as well. Um, and then there is the Comfort Wheel. I think that comes in an 8 inch as well. So that can also be suitable for a Syrian. The next question is how often do I have to clean my hamster's cage? This depends on how large your hamster's cage is. If your cage is above the minimum of 450 square inches of floor space, you should only be cleaning it out once a month. Of course, you should daily spot clean or spot clean every couple of days, but if your cage is very, very large, you really do not need to be cleaning and taking out all of the bedding every single week or um, sooner than that. The next question is, how much should a healthy Syrian weigh? So there is a very large gap of how much a Syrian should weigh. A Syrian can weigh anywhere from 120 grams to 200 grams. There are some Syrians that actually get a little bit larger than that, but that is usually around how much they weigh. Um, Honey here actually is a very, very small Syrian. She actually is only around 100 grams, which is very small for a Syrian, but she is active, she's healthy, she drinks um, and eats and everything. So that is just how she is. Um, so as long as your hamster is looking healthy and active and eating, their weight should be fine. Hi. So the next hamster I have is Tater Tot, so you guys can watch her play. So the first question is, what are the pros and cons of a Roborowski hamster? I'm thinking about getting one. So I don't think there are a ton of cons. Um, the pros obviously are they're really adorable, they look like little cotton balls, um, they're super duper fun to watch and just super cute in general. 
Um, the only con I would have to say is if you are getting a Roborowski, you really have to be prepared um, and understand that you may not ever tame your Robo. They may not become 100% tame where you can just hold them and they'll sit still. Robos have a lot of energy. They also are the hardest species to tame. So you really have to be patient with them. You can't get upset if they're not, um, the taming isn't going how you want it. Um, some are a lot tougher to tame than others, obviously, but that is just something you need to keep in mind. And I think that is one of the only cons I would have to think of when it comes to owning a Roborowski. The next question is, do dwarf hamsters need to be in pairs or groups? No. Dwarf hamsters can do just fine on their own. I actually recommend you just have one hamster per cage. Um, there are lots of times where someone will get a pair of dwarf hamsters and they end up later fighting and sometimes they usually will fight at night when you are sleeping and it's possible that the fight can become so bad that it will kill the other hamster so you will wake up with only one hamster which is really sad which is why I really only recommend just getting one hamster. Pairs can be pretty difficult. Um, you do need to have a very, very large cage. You need to have two of everything, including a spare cage that is also a large cage. Um, so just one hamster per cage is the best option. The next question is what type of sand do they need to bathe in? So the best sand for hamsters is you are going to want to get something that is sand, not dust. So you can get chinchilla bath sand. Stay away from anything that says chinchilla bath dust. The difference between sand and dust is that dust is literal dust. Um, so it's dust particles from sand and dust is very dusty and can cause a hamster to get a respiratory infection which you don't want. So you are going to want to get sand. I personally have a really hard time finding just chinchilla bath sand. So I use children's play sand, which you can get from any hardware store. It's actually a super cheap option because you get like a 40 pound bag for maybe $10 and that will last you probably your, your hamster's entire life. Um, so it is a really great deal. The next question is, if your hamster is an adult, can you still tame him or her? Yes, it is totally possible to um, tame an adult hamster. They don't have to be babies to be tamed. Basically the taming process is similar to bonding with your hamster and just getting them used to people. That is basically what the taming process is and, and includes. So you can tame any um, hamster at any age. The next question is, if you have other loud pets like dogs, can you still own a hamster? Yes, you totally can still own a hamster if you have other loud animals like a parrot or a dog or just any other animals that make a lot of noise. It is possible. You might want to keep your hamster in a room that's more quiet and away from those animals, but your hamster will adapt to, to those noises and become used to them. The next question is, what are the different breeds of hamsters? And um, this is kind of like a two-part question because first I want to say that hamsters are not breeds, they actually are called species. So the difference between breeds and species is that a breed is an animal that is slightly different from the other. So for example, dogs, cats, rabbits, those are all different breeds, um, like pugs, labradors, things like that. A species is a whole completely different animal, so an elephant and a turtle. Hamsters are species, which is why they cannot actually interbreed with each other. So if someone tells you they have a Syrian dwarf hamster, that is not true because a Syrian and dwarf can't even breed because they're not the same species. It would be like a tiger and a fish trying to breed with each other. It's not possible. And to actually answer the question, there are five different species of domesticated hamsters. There is the Roborowski, the Syrian, the Chinese hamster, Winter White, and the Russian Campbell's dwarf hamster. And the last hamster that I have out is Bumble, my Syrian hamster. Another question that I got is, how can you tell when your hamster is in heat? So female hamsters go into heat every four days and basically on the fourth day, that is when they are able to breed and all females go through this. They go through it every four days. Um, you're going to smell a different smell from your female hamster. It usually smells like burning rubber. It's a weird scent. It's not too bad in my opinion. 
I think each hamster is different when it comes to how, how bad they smell. My females actually really don't smell that bad when they're in heat. But to answer the question how to tell when they're in heat is basically that smell, you'll smell that. And then also when you um, kind of scratch your hamster's butt area, their tail should stick up like straight up. I'll insert a picture to show that, but that's basically, um, <laughs> that means they're in heat. Um, and sometimes females can act a little bit more crazy when they're on heat as well, which that's totally normal. The next question is, is a hamster ball safe? Now, I know a lot of people are going to be a little bit angry when I say this because it's such a controversial topic, but I do not think hamster balls are safe, and I have a couple of reasons why. So the first reason that hamster balls, in my opinion, are not safe is because they can cause a lot of injuries. So a hamster can't see inside of a hamster ball, um, let alone they actually can't see that well in the first place, but they easily can co collide into walls, they can fall down stairs, they can also get their nails and toes caught in the slits of the ball because those are the ventilation holes, but they can get their fingers and toes stuck in there and they can break them and hurt them. The next thing is it's stressful for your hamster. Your hamster has two options when put into a ball to sit there or to run. If your hamster is scared inside the ball, they don't have the option to go and hide under a hideout or to go eat food. They don't have the option to go drink. Um, they're forced to basically run in a very small, tight enclosure that they can't get out of. Another thing that is, I know a lot of people think or have told me that their hamster enjoys it um, because they put the hamster ball up to the cage and the hamster jumps in. Well, I can put basically anything up to my hamster and they're going to want to jump in because they're curious. Whether it be a mug, a travel cage, um, a tube, it doesn't really matter what I put up to their cage, they generally are going to climb in it willingly. But that doesn't mean that they enjoy it or like it. In Germany, hamster balls are actually listed as a unsuitable animal supplies with a high risk of injury. They also are very criticized by vets and the, the animal protection societies. This is important to note because Germany actually has the highest care standards when it comes to hamsters, so they, kn they know what they're talking about. So that is why I think hamster balls are not safe and that is why I choose not to use them and I'd rather use a hamster safe playpen and play with my hamster like that. The next question is, my Saren hamster doesn't like running on the wheel and I don't know what to do about it. If your hamster is choosing not to run on the wheel and you have a proper sized wheel and it is easy to spin and they can turn it on their own, then the only option would be to give them a very, very large cage instead because hamsters do need all that to get rid of all of their energy and the wheel is one of the main places they get rid of it. So if they're not using a wheel, you probably are going to want to make sure you have a very large cage instead. Hi. Hello. The last question that I have for today is reasons hamsters die suddenly or at an early age. So hamsters genetics actually play a very very big role in their life and nowadays hamsters are bred very very poorly. When they're bred their health really isn't considered unless you are getting from an ethical breeder. You may end up with a hamster that has internal defects that you may never notice because they are internal. So they can have things like enlarged organs, internal tumors, and similar things like that. Basically just internal defects. If you are curious as to why your hamster may have died, one of the best ways to figure that out is to go see a vet and they can get an autopsy done and that can maybe give you some answers. So yeah guys, that is it for this video. If you guys enjoyed and you like seeing these this types of videos where I answer your hamster care questions, tell me down below and maybe I'll do another part. So yeah guys, thank you for watching. Bye!